Hi there, I picked up this little vintage device here from eBay. It was made by a company called Light Soldering Developments and it's meant to verify the temperature of your soldering iron with that probe. The writing on the back provides some useful information. The thermocouple is an iron constantan type, also known as type J, and there is apparently a cold junction compensation. The rest are instructions how to use it, like to cover the soldering iron tip thoroughly with fresh tin. J-type thermocouples are similar to the far more popular K-type. J-types produce more voltage per degree but can't handle quite as high temperatures. In this case, neither type has a problem with the 500 degrees Celsius or 932 degrees Fahrenheit maximum used in this application. To test it, I use my trusty Hakko soldering station at the 350 degrees Celsius or 662 degrees Fahrenheit, which I normally use for everyday soldering. A quick test with a high quality k type thermocouple shows about 320 degrees Celsius. The reading depends a lot on getting a good thermal contact, which is why the instructions of the light sole says to use a freshly tinned tip. I do not want to mess up my thermocouple with solder and since I have tested my Hakko before, I am pretty confident that the temperature is really close to 350 degrees Celsius. Let's see what the light hole says. Hmm, barely 150 degrees, that can't be right. But let's follow instructions and apply fresh solder to see if things improve. They definitely do, 250 degrees Celsius now, which is better, but still about 100 degrees too low. Even practically drowning the sensor in a blob of liquid solder doesn't produce higher readouts. I think it's time to have a closer look at how this thing is supposed to work. I suspected that there might be screws hiding under the felt strips that act as feet, so let's open the unit up and have a peek inside. Some rather crusty screws, but that's still far better than a sealed enclosure that can only be destructively opened. There we go. I don't know about you, but I'm a bit disappointed. A black and red wire connecting the instrument to the socket where the thermocouple plugs in. And that's all there is. Well, at least no need for a schematic. To find out if there's anything special in the probe, I connected it to my multimeter in temperature mode. Although the meter expects a K-type probe and this is a J-type, they are quite close, especially at low temperature. It seems to respond as you would expect a thermocouple to behave. And testing it with a soldering iron produces again a low output. Let's see if freshly tinning helps. It definitely does getting now 350 degrees and higher, but one has to remember that a J-type probe on a meter meant for K-type probes will always produce values that are higher. Still, it seems as if the probe itself is functioning just fine. Moving on, let's test the instrument by applying some test leads to it. I am using my calibrator in voltage mode, but something is wrong. The needle does not go over 100 and the calibrator is stuck at 16.4 millivolts. This is strange, obviously the instrument is drawing too much current for the calibrator to handle. To check this, I wired a multimeter into the setup. The multimeter shows the current in milliamps drawn by the instrument. The calibrator can now go further because the burden resistance of the multimeter reduces the current the calibrator has to deliver, but ultimately it stops at 27 milliamps, which is way too much. Something weird is going on in the instrument, and to find out, it has to be removed from the box first. There is a sticker on the side of the instrument, and I pause for a moment so you can read it. FSD means full scale deflection. So when 23.39 millivolts is applied, the needle should show full scale. I bet that 23.39 millivolt is the voltage produced by a J-type probe at 500 degrees Celsius. I don't have the J-type formula or the NIST tables, but I have them for K-type thermocouples and for K-type the value for 500 degrees is 20.544 millivolts. I don't know what to make of the rest, especially what appears to say 0.5 ohm. 
The bottom line stating Iron Con probably stands for Iron Constantan, which is of course what a J-type probe is made of. In this test, the red meter measures the current and the yellow one the voltage across the instrument. Increasing the voltage for my calibrator, it seems the blockage is gone and the instrument behaves much better. At full scale, we have about 0.5 milliamps of current and about 27.5 millivolts on the meter. That isn't quite what the sticker said, which was 23.39 millivolts for full scale, probably the reason why the readout is too low for 350 degrees Celsius. But I really would like to know where the promised automatic cold junction compensation is hiding that was promised in the blurb on the back, and if there is something causing occasional shorts that would explain the excessive current shown earlier. The only place for all this is inside the instrument itself. With the spudger, the cover came up relatively easy and removing the scale uncovers there's something unusual hiding in there. To view and access these items, I have to remove the actual mechanism and desolder one of the leads. And there it is. A disc shaped component that might be a PTC or NTC and what looks like a custom made wire wound resistor. I decided to remove these things from inside the instrument because obviously something isn't right. Once I find the problem, I can always add them into the wiring into the red box where they are much easier accessible. Testing the empty instrument and first thing I notice is that it bounces a lot. I think I somehow caused that because when I had the mechanism out, I found that it ran into a hard stop halfway up the scale. I could not find out why and after a gentle knock, the blockage vanished and it behaves as you see now. At least it still works. So what CS resistance was in there? Oh shoot, I must have somehow broken it during the extraction, because it now reads infinite. I should have measured the whole assembly before trying to unstick it from inside the instrument. Well, at least the disc itself has 3.6 ohms, so it's the wire wound part that's broken. I examined the resistor under a magnifier and the wire was broken off at one end. It was too short to solder it back to the original tab, so I fashioned an extension of the tab and soldered the wire on that. Not pretty, but functional. And with that fix, the wire wound resistor alone is 17.7 ohms. Together the whole thing is just shy of 22 ohms. To find out what the disc shape resistor is, I used a hot air gun of 100 degrees Celsius and its resistance drops significantly. But recovers when cooling down. A resistor that shows less resistance when it's hot is called an NTC because it has a negative temperature coefficient. So that's the cold junction compensation. I have covered thermocouples before but let me briefly explain cold junctions using a K-type thermocouple. A J-type works just the same. The junction of two different metals produces a tiny voltage through what is called the Seebeck effect. The hotter the junction is, the more voltage. This is what a thermocouple is. A junction of two dissimilar metals. The problem is that when you connect the other end of the thermocouple to your meter, you create inevitably another set of metal to metal junction, which produces their own tiny voltage depending on their temperature. The standard millivolt to degrees temperature conversion as maintained by NIST assumes that this second junction is kept at zero degrees Celsius, like an ice bath, hence it's called cold junction. Since keeping an ice bath in your meter is somewhat impractical, the workaround is to measure the actual temperature of the junction and simply correct the readings. In our case, the probe is say at 500 degrees Celsius and the instrument and the cold junction at 0 degrees Celsius. The probe would deliver, I guess, 23.39 millivolts and the instrument would show full scale. If the ambient temperature is higher, like room temperature, the no longer so cold junction would produce a negative voltage so that the overall voltage seen by the instrument is lower, resulting in a lower readout. But now the NTC in series with the instrument lowers its resistance the warmer it gets, thus less voltage is dropped over the NTC 
and this raises the instrument readout. If done properly, the resistance drop by the NTC compensates exactly for the increase in negative voltage at the cold junction at ambient temperature. So what's wrong with this setup? Why does it read too low? The answer is most likely thermocouple aging. According to the Wikipedia article on thermocouples, this affects especially those that are used at high temperatures, resulting in lower voltage outputs. The choices are therefore to replace the probe with a new J-type sensor or to replace the fixed resistor with a lower value. I decided to give that a try. I guess I could have made this scientific by heating a J-type probe and a K-type to the same temperature, reading the temperature using the K-type with my multimeter and the output of the J-type in millivolts, then I could calculate the resistance needed to get the needle of the instrument to read the temperature. Or I could just try a few resistance values since I don't have a 20 ohm trim pot. Starting with 2.2 ohms that I had handy, Testing with my Hakko at 350 degrees Celsius, I'm now reading 400, so 2.2 ohms is definitely too low. It took a few tries, you see the resistors on the table, but 5 ohms seems to be right. And after setting the Hakko to 400 degrees Celsius or 750 degrees Fahrenheit, the meter shows the right value. And when the Hakko is set to its highest value of 450 degrees Celsius, or 842 degrees Fahrenheit, the value is at least close. The final view of the inside before closing it up with a 5 ohm resistor in series with the original NTC. Let's face it, this isn't a precision instrument, so I declare this problem fixed. Just for fun, I checked the temperature of my 100 watt solder gun. It takes a bit to heat up, but oh boy, if you keep that trigger pressed, it does get hot. There's no thermostat in this thing. The tip is basically a short across the secondary of a transformer. I never appreciate how hot it will get. While I found this investigation into a fairly low-tech gadget quite entertaining, I think this is quite enough video about the light salt meter. If you enjoy my videos, don't forget to like and subscribe. There are many more projects, repairs and reviews coming up. And it would be great if you decided supporting this channel by becoming a Patreon. Thanks for watching.